What's happening, everybody? MG here. MG Covers bringing you a brand new sports handicapping video. Super, super excited about this video. This is going to be the first video of a three part series how to create your own stat model for sports betting. So it's going to be a lot of information. And this is kind of an introduction to creating your own sports betting model. Um, like I've always said, the reason you have a model is to take your model uh, and create a line or a power ranking per se and compare that line to the sports betting line so that you can find value in order to determine whether or not that line is good or not. So again, this is the very first video. Uh, it's going to be part of a three-part series. And without any further ado, let's get started. So why have a stat model? Well, the first thing we need to do uh, before we talk about why having a stat model, we need to talk about or define what is a stat model. A stat model is a statistically driven model that is non-biased and helps a sports handicapper find value and or create a line. So the whole purpose of us creating a stat model is so that we can have a model that is statistically based and there's no bias factored into that. Now I'm going to give you one example. Uh, the, I'm recording this video. This is uh, middle of February 2020. So we just ended football season uh, with the Super Bowl, what, two or three weeks ago. So what I'm going to do just for a minute, I just want you to think about, let's say we were in charge, we were a bookmaker and we're in charge of setting a line for New England Patriots, I don't even know the schedule, but let's hypothetically, let's say New England Patriots are going to play the Cincinnati Bengals in week one of the NFL season, and we need to create a line for that game. We're the sports book. We're creating a line. So we have no stats, right? This is the very first game. What would that line be? Well, the line the sports books create has bias factored into it. And what I mean by bias, okay, the whole purpose of a sports book is what? They want to create even action. They want enough people playing New England. They want uh, what? They want half the people, best case scenario, or close to it. They want uh, close to half the people playing New England, the other half playing Cincinnati. Okay? So how is Cincinnati perceived in the general public, general betting public? They're perceived as a really bad team, right? Uh, New England Patriots are perceived as what? One of the best teams of all time. Uh, you know, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, uh, very well coached. So if I'm thinking of that line off the top of my head, we know it would at least be seven, right? Minus seven. And that even seems to where if it was minus seven, a lot of people would probably end up playing uh, Cincinnati because it would it would feel like, New England would probably win by, say, two touchdowns. So, and I'm, I'm just thinking of this off the top of my head while I'm making this video, I think the line would probably be come in somewhere around New England minus maybe 13. Um, that's enough to where it would give people pause before they actually, you know, laid, you know, New England minus 13. So all that that I've just factored in my head is based on bias. They have to have – they're going to set that line how the general public uh, perceive those teams. Now, the way we do our NFL model, we wait till we have about three weeks of stats, and then we are able to create our stat model. But that was just an example so that you can see that the sportsbook line, when they factor a line, they're not doing what we do as a – as, as I do as a professional sports handicapper as far as creating a stat model. So our stat model is going to be better than the sports books line because there's no bias uh, factored into it. It's going to be pure stats. Now, that's not the only thing that we do, right? Um, those of you that follow me for a long time, there are two parts to handicapping. You have the objective part, which is what we're talking about now, the, st st uh, the stat model, and you have the subjective part, which is where we do factor in uh, different things that are not related to stats, home field advantage, um, Maybe there's a team that has an injury. So we, we kind of, you know, factor all that in and put those two together in order to make a play. But for this video, we're just talking about a stat model. So, again, a stat model is, is basically statistically driven, no bias factored in whatsoever. 
And this is what I just talked about. Sportsbook created a line that factors in bias with hopes of creating even action on both sides. And finally, having a stat model allows us to find value and discrepancies in the sportsbook line. So if you're new to sports betting or or if you're maybe you're, you're buying plays from somebody, regardless, if you do not have a stat model and you're looking at a line for a game, how in the hell do you know that line is a good line, a bad line, etc.? Well, if you don't have a stat model, you don't know. Um, for every NFL game, for every college basketball game, every game that I'm looking at, I have my own line that that comes from a stat model that's proven to be a successful model so I can compare and see if that line is good or not. So if you don't have a stat model, when you look at a line, you're just basically guessing whether or not that <clears throat> that line is good or not. So the main purpose of a stat model um, and having one is going to allow us to find value and discrepancies in a sports book line. Okay, three elements all sports betting stat models must have. Number one, statistically driven. Um, regardless of how uh, obscure or how far-fetched that line may seem, um, we're still going to uh, let the model create what it creates, so to speak. Um, I don't know if I explained that well, so let me give it another shot. So when, we, when, we're, when we're doing the stat model, once we know it's a proven stat model, like my stat model, um, it may... Oh, I'll give you an example. Let's do an example. Um, early in the season, if you remember back football season, we had the Jets had not won a game. And they were playing Dallas. I think Dallas had struggled. I, I can't remember their record early on, but I think they played like the third or fourth game of the season. We, My stat model had the Jets favored to win the game. And I didn't personally wager it, but I had cl uh, coaching clients that uh, wagered. And I think the Jets won outright. Uh, had a lot of clients play them on the money line. It was like a plus 300. There's a video you can go back on my YouTube channel where you see me talking about, I actually show you um, my stat model for that game. I just remember that. So that's the point we're making. So the uh, stat model is strictly uh, statistically driven, no bias factored in at all. Uh, number two, the thing you need to have when you're creating a model, keep it simple. Uh, the best models have are just very simple. When you start to factor in, you know, when you got like five or six stats and you have this complex formula, what it does, it sort of dilutes it to where it's just not effective. So I'm going to give you some examples a little bit later, some things to think about. But again, when you're when you're trying to create your own stat model, keep it simple. Simple is the best way. And again, that doesn't guarantee that it's going to work and it's going to be a proven model. But from what I've found from my from creating my models over the years the best models are the ones that are relatively simple in fact the first model that I ever broke through and really created was nhl model it was the first model i created it was very complex um, it did win initially but not long term uh simplified it the only thing i use for nhl now are basically three stats that's all i use and i, I combine those stats to create a power ranking which we're going to get in in parts two and parts three but Again, it was just real simple. It was much more effective and uh, allowed me to uh, turn a profit in NHL. Uh, third, use only recent stats. One of the mistakes uh, people make in sports betting community or people that wager is you're looking at year-to-date records. Year-to-date records, uh, it's no good, man. Or either you'll see something like uh, this team is 18-5 and five against the spread on Monday nights. All that's BS. The only thing that really um, – matters when you're creating your uh, stat model you want to use recent stats and i'm going to show you for each sport some examples of uh recent stats because if you think about uh like early on kansas city struggled right we had them as the uh, underdog in a lot of games they were favored that they were the favorite in an nfl season we actually had houston beating them uh when houston we had houston favored even though houston was a dog um this is nfl season and then later in the season they got um, they improved a lot um, and, and were a lot better and, of course, went on to uh, win the Super Bowl. But early on, there was a lot of bias because people perceived Kansas City as being really good and they weren't at that time. But our stat model was able to sniff out that they were not as good because we weren't influenced by 
any type of bias. We were just looking at stats. So again, I'm going to review that three elements, all sports betting models, sports betting stat models must have. It's got to be statistically driven, no bias. It's got to be simple and you need to use only recent stats. So then the next question is, I get asked this a lot, which is one of the reasons I create, I'm going to create this series. You know, where do we start? What do I do? What, what do I look for? I mean, how do I get this thing off the ground? And what you want to do in any sport, regardless of what the sport is, what makes a team win? So you might answer that question by saying, well, MG, the team with the most points wins. And that is correct. So for whatever that sport is, let's just take NFL. So if a team scores 30 points, what makes them, what happens, what statistic that, that we can find that allows them to score those 30 points or what stat allows them or shows that they uh, are able to keep opponent from scoring. So we want to focus on, regardless of sport, what makes a team win. And so let's look at some examples. In other words, a better way to state this was you need to find a stat that correlates to winning. Okay, now what you're looking at now, these are year-to-date stats for the regular season uh, 2019 for NFL. And if you look over here on the far right, we have turnover margin. This is year-to-date turnover margin for NFL teams for 2019 season. Okay, number one team turnover margin was the New England Patriots at plus 21. New Orleans was second at plus 15. Seattle plus 12. Green Bay, Green Bay plus 12. Minnesota plus 11. Baltimore plus 10. Pittsburgh plus 8. Kansas City plus 8. Tennessee plus 6. San Francisco plus 4. Buffalo plus 4. And you ask, you might ask the question, well, what does that I – I don't get it. Out of those 11 teams that I just called out, 10 of those teams made the playoffs. The only team in that uh, chart I'm, that you're looking at now are, are the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I could be wrong, but I think that's right. They were the, Pittsburgh's the only team that did not make the playoffs. So, we now have a correlation to winning turnover margin. And turnover margin is one of the things that I include in my own personal stat model for NFL. And and I've said this before in the uh, – in the past, you could almost create a model just on turnover margin. I probably wouldn't do it because I think there's things you can add to it to make it better. But what I'm trying to do is show you an example of a stat. Again, the stats are non-biased, but they correlate to winning. So if a team in the NFL has a positive turnover margin or is in the top, say top 11, top 10 in turnover margin, good chance of making the playoffs, right? Now watch this. Examples of stats that correlate to losing. So another way to test to make sure that stat is or that that correlates to winning, look at the bottom the bottom teams and see if it correlates to losing. And it does. So we look over here. Um, you know, the, you see 23rd, the Jets had a minus four turnover margin. You look at the very worst team, the Los Angeles Chargers. They were worst in the NFL with a minus 17 margin. So we call out these teams. Uh, Jets, Detroit, Atlanta, Cleveland, Miami, Tampa, Cincinnati, Carolina, Giants, L.A. Chargers, zero teams that I just called out made the playoffs. So that is a stat that is a legit stat for finding a correlation to winning in the NFL is a turnover margin. So when you build a model, and again, you could do this for any sport. You could do it for NBA. You could do it for hockey. You want to look at good teams, or you could just look at a, um, you know, look at a box score of a team that that wins. Now, obviously, the team that wins is going to score more points, right? You know, a team that wins in hockey, they might win three to one, four to two, or two to one, two to zero, et cetera, et cetera. But study that and see if you can find a stat in there that maybe the general public is not aware of that correlates to uh, winning. Okay. This is very interesting. This is sort of going to be a mind-blowing thing for you guys, and, and hopefully you can take this information and start to at least the beginning stages of your own stat model. So we're going to look at the NBA here, uh, example of using NBA points per game. 
Now, a lot of people think, now this happens a lot. Uh, most people in sports betting community, whether it's whatever the sport, they focus on offense, which means you would think teams that score, that average the most points per game, uh, that would correlate to winning. And it does, but what you're going to see is it's not the best stat to use. Okay? So we look at, what this is, is this is uh, right at the All-Star break, so this is a good time. And these are uh, average points per game year-to-date. I just showed year-to-date just so you could see it. And it shows games played and shows their win-loss record. So the number one team, so Milwaukee's averaging 119.6 points per game, and they are the best team in NBA. Houston Rockets, 118. Dallas Mavericks, 116. L.A. Clippers, 115. You see I have all those circled in green because all four of those teams have a winning record. Now we look at the Pelicans. Pelicans average 115 points per game, but they have a losing record. Let's look at the Washington Wizards. They are 20 and 33, even though they score average 115 points per game. Lakers, 114 points per game. They have a winning record. But the next two teams, Portland and San Antonio, uh, both have losing records yet they are 8th and ninth in points scored. And then finally, my Boston Celtics coming in at 113 points per game. So what's interesting about this, the stat that we would think would be best correlated to winning, how many points you score per game in the, in the NBA. So out of the top 10 teams, there's only six teams that have a winning record. Okay? And again, this doesn't mean that it's uh, – I mean, there is some correlation to, you know, scoring scoring more points than your opponent uh, offensive, but it's not the best stat, and I'm going to show you that. So now look at this. This is NBA defensive stats. If you look over here on the far right, these are uh, how many points each team is averaging giving up per game. So the best team in the league is Orlando Magic, um, only allowing 105 points per game. But then you see the rest of these teams, uh, Philadelphia, number two, Boston, three, Toronto, number four, Denver, five, Utah Jazz, six, L.A. Lakers, seven, Milwaukee Bucks, eight, Indiana Pacers, nine, Oklahoma City, ten. And what do you notice? All of those teams have winning records. So you would think, like I said before, you would think on the first slide it would be related to offense would be a better stat that would be correlated to winning, but it's actually for NBA, it's defensive stats. And my stat model is built primarily, um, well, it's built all around defensive stats. Now this isn't the only stat stat that I use. I use a couple other ones, but you can see um, this is a much better way. Uh, defensive stats correlate more to winning than offensive stats, which is interesting because you would think it would be the other way. So this is how you get an advantage over the sports books, how you get advantage over the general public. So nine out of the ten teams in points allowed have winning records. So it's much better than using the other stats. So if you want sort of a homework assignment until I release uh, part two to this video, whatever sport you want to start on or you want to experiment with this, um, you want to – and just take notes. You don't have to, like – create this model and make it complex look at the nfl look at uh college basketball uh soccer whatever the sport is you can look at baseball and try to find a stat look at look look at successful teams teams that have winning records or you can look at box scores and what can you take away from that that other than just you know they score more points than their opponent what stat can we look at that correlates to winning and then you could also sort of uh, do the opposite of it, which I've done in that other stat. Look at bad teams. What makes them not win games? And if you can find that, you can be on the way to creating a pretty good stat model. So, again, this is pretty much uh, part one. But before we wrap this up, I'm going to show you number of games used for stat model for each sport. This is personally what I do. Um, and some handicappers may, may use something differently. But, again, year-to-date stats are no good when you're creating a stat model. So for NFL, I'm just using stats for the last five games. How a team performed in September uh, is not 
the best indication of how they're going to perform in, say, December. So if it's December, we're primarily using stats for November. And I made another video about this before. The best indication of future performance is most recent performance. Now for NHL, we use the last 10 games. Uh, Major League Baseball, we use the last 10 games. NCAA Basketball, I use the last five games. And Soccer, I use the last five games. Actually, Soccer now, I use the last six games because of the uh, – where I get my stats generated from, they only show the last, that's the only way I could get the model to uh, calculate the last six. So, but the point of this is when you're creating your model, you want to make sure that you create um, a model that has the last, that has, that you're only using uh, recent stats for each team. So I'm going to rewind here real quick and kind of do a summary because I realized I didn't have that. So again, uh, three elements. All sports betting stat models must have. You need to st It needs to be statistically driven. You need to have no bias factored in. Whatever that model says, um, that's what you're going to go with. And, again, you might have to tweak it uh, and keep it simple. Don't make it complicated. Some of the best models I've had are simple. And then, of course, use only recent stats. So we'll fast forward. Again, that's part one. Hopefully that made sense. If you got any questions, you can let me know. As always, if you want to become a member, uh, you don't want to create your own stat models, we have our coaching program, normally $29.95 a month. You can join. Whoops. Did that not stat not come up? <laughs> There's supposed to be something that shows $19.95. It's actually $19.95 a month. There's a link in the profile uh, description box. You can click on that. You can join for $19.95 for the first month. You get access to all of my power rankings for all sports. Uh, so you'll be able to take my power rankings. The lines are already created for you. You don't have to create your own stat model. We also have handicapping videos, how to handicap each sport, uh, NFL, soccer, NHL, NCAA basketball, Major League Baseball starting up uh, a couple months. You also get access to premium video content we upload each week, and you get unlimited email support from me. Again, $19.95 for the first month, $29.95 $29 per month after that. If you just want plays, uh, you can get daily picks. It's $49.95 a month. You get access to all my plays for all sports. And we use Telegram. So when you become a client uh, of daily picks, when I actually make the wager, you get those picks immediately. So that's the video there for part one, uh, creating on stat model. Hope you liked it. We're going to come up with a part two, maybe here at the end of the week. And then, of course, we'll have a part three uh, it's going to be really good. So if you're looking to create your own stat model, stay tuned. If you like this video, like it, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I give out a ton of information on Twitter and Instagram, specifically Instagram, my storyline. Uh, I am MG Covers on there, cover spelled with a C. Hope everybody has a great week. We will talk to you guys soon. Peace.